Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yeah, we're ready for the event. Popular Science, this is Mission Control, Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Popular Science. How do you hear me? Hey, we have you uh, loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Little echo. Thank, thank you. We're delighted to be here with you this morning. You received your first holiday delivery this morning when the Cygnus spacecraft arrived. Scott, I understand you and Chell used the robotic arm to grapple with it. How did that go? Yeah, I was uh, helping him out, but he did most of the hard work. If you can, if you have a mic that's live, if you can turn it off when you're not um, talking, that would help us with the echo. But uh, yeah, he did a great job, and um, you know it's great to see a new vehicle up here. Um, you know we've had some, you know, some difficulties, so you know getting uh, Cygnus safely on board has been, uh, you know, great. Uh, treat for us. Scott, Cygnus is carrying a Microsoft HoloLens. How will you use augmented reality on the space station? You know, I actually got the uh, opportunity to try that um, out before I launched. And, uh, you know, it seems like there are, are certain capabilities that would be good for us on board uh, the space station. One would be you know, right now we look at the computer or the an iPad to to look at procedures. And if you could have, you know, a procedure right in your field of view, um, something that was commandable with your voice, you know, where you could scroll through the different steps, you know, that would be helpful. It also has this capability where uh, somebody on the ground perhaps can be looking at uh, basically what you're looking at and be able to write um, in your field of view. So let's say you're, we're working on a, a piece of hardware and we're not that familiar with it, but we have an expert on the ground. You know, that person could, uh, you know, basically see what we're seeing and make annotations, point to things, um, you know, and kind of lead us through uh, a particular activity. Um, you know, that's the other one of the one of the many capabilities of that 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 or similar hardware that we're excited about. Mikhail, Popular Science has many makers and inventors among its readers. Do you have a greatest ISS hack or a moment where you had to fix something in a pinch? Михаил, вопрос к вам. Дело в том, что Popular Science обладает огромной читательской, зрительской аудиторией. И расскажите, пожалуйста, приходилось ли вам на МКС когда-либо что-то чинить или что-то придумать новое для более эффективного использования? Ну, вообще-то это постоянно происходит. То есть мы This is happening all the time. We are constantly maintaining this station. We are fixing something. Something breaks down and we have to fix it. So this is a very complicated laboratory and we always are there to fix it. Of course, every time we have to be creative sometimes to um, fix something. But thank you very much for a good question. It happens on a daily basis. Scott, you're the subject of 12 different research projects for the twin study with your brother Mark. What kind of sampling do you do on the space station and why? Yeah, so there's uh, a lot of experiments, a lot of samples. Just today I was, uh, because we have a Soyuz leaving in uh, less than 48 hours now with, you know, three of the crew members on board. Um, I was doing some uh, urine samples and saliva samples for various uh, activities and experiments. Uh, tomorrow we have uh, some blood draws that'll go um, go home on the Soyuz uh, and not be frozen like they normally are. Um, so there's those kind of you know bodily fluid samples. We also collect other kinds of data with different imaging technology we have on board. You know, for instance, we have an ultrasound here that. Uh, uh, is uh, another way that we collect data. Um, and there's other experiments that are more, uh, you know, related to our cognitive ability. So that they're, they're uh, computer-based, uh, you know, tests of, of how our, you know, cognitive uh, capacity changes over time. 
Mikhail, your year in space is an important step towards long-term space exploration and eventually Mars. Why do you think it's important for humans to go beyond low Earth orbit? Михаил, вопрос к вам. Ваша годовая экспедиция является одним шагом на пути к дальнейшему исследованию космоса и, может быть, даже на пути к исследованию Марса. Скажите, пожалуйста, почему так важно человечеству изучать, исследовать планет за пределами земной орбиты, то есть лететь дальше в космос? Ну, тут, наверное, можно ответить словами великого русского ученого. Here I can quote Tsiolkovsky, a great Russian scientist, uh, who said that the Earth is the cradle of our humanity. But we cannot live in this cradle for our entire life. We have to develop further, we have to explore more. Of course, we have to colonize Mars because we are expanding as a humanity. It's a normal, natural process. And what we're doing here with Scott, here on board the ISS, are the first steps of our future exploration of the solar systems, of the exploration of Mars, and so on. Thank you for your question. Scott, this is the second week of global climate talks in Paris. Looking at the Earth from 249 miles up, you have the best view of global climate change of all. What would you like negotiators to keep inspective or know about Earth from your view? You know, being up here gives us a little bit of a different perspective on, on our planet. You know, we could see how uh, fragile the uh, and thin the atmosphere is. It actually looks more like... Uh, you know, a thin film over the surface than it does this, uh, you know, this massive thing that you, when you're standing on the ground and you look up, the sky just looks enormous. But up here, it doesn't. It looks, uh, you know, very thin and fragile and something that, um, you know, we we need to protect because it's the only thing that's really protecting us from space, which is, you know, not, some, not a place that we can uh, easily live. Um, you know, you also see pollution in certain areas of the world, uh, certain parts of Asia especially, that are, uh, you know, it's almost constant. Um, and, uh, you know, since I've been up here, sometimes we see, uh, you know, weather patterns and weather systems in places that are unexpected. So, you know, as far as the, the people, um, you know, that are meeting in Paris and negotiating, uh, these agreements, um, you know, I would just hope that they they recognize, and I th think they probably do, that this is something that's, uh, you know, critical to our survival, and it's something that we need to fix, uh, fix now before it's too late. Mikhail, I have a question from a popular science reader. Are you growing any more food on the space station? Михаил, у меня вопрос от одного из читателей uh, нашего журнала Popular Science. Uh, вы, uh, совсем был понятен вопрос, вы... Может быть... Вы... Расскажите, пожалуйста, о самом замечательном моменте на станции. Прошу прощения, была некоторая задержка в связи. Можно еще раз? I'm sorry, we had some delay in communication. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I had a reader question for Mikhail. Are you growing any more food on the space station? We all watched when um, the when you ate lettuce, and that was pretty exciting to us here on Earth. Ну, это вашим экспериментом по выращиванию. Uh, вот наши коллеги сейчас в модуле Columbus uh, есть целый. Uh, Our colleagues are right now in the Columbus module. We have a greenhouse of sorts here. It is uh, illuminating in purple. And yes, we keep growing it on the station, and uh, it is still work in progress. We haven't seen the real fruits yet, but I hope we will see it soon. Thank you very much for your great question. And thank you both for speaking with us this morning. Everyone here at Pop Science wishes you a happy holiday in space. Yeah, happy uh, holidays to you, and uh, great talking to you today. Station, this is Houston ACR.
That concludes the popular science portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from WBFF-TV. Can you call the crew now? They say they're ready. I'm sorry, what? My IFC is fine. Candace, you got to start. Okay. Station, this is WBFF TV. How do you hear me? Well, we hear, hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the space station. Great. Thank you so much. We will get underway in just a minute. Three, two. A year in space. That's the mission for NASA astronaut Scott Kelly and Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko. We've been watching here on Earth. We have seen stunning pictures on social media. Now ISS Expedition 45 Commander Scott Kelly and Flight Engineer Mikhail Kornienko join me live from space to talk about the experience. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, good morning, and uh, welcome aboard the space station. Thank you, and of course, a very busy day for you with the arrival of Cygnus. What did it look like from your perspective, and is this like an early holiday gift for you all, Scott? Yeah, it's a uh, you know incredibly beautiful vehicle. Um, we haven't had one here uh, for a while now, almost I think a year. Uh, you know, since we had last had a Cygnus, and uh, it went launched flawlessly. Although we had some weather issues initially, and the rendezvous and uh, grapple were were flawless. And uh, yeah, we got some uh, Christmas presents inside, but uh, we won't be getting into those here for uh, just a few days. Right. All right, Mikhail, there is a lot of research that is conducted aboard the International Space Station. What's been a highlight so far? Михаил, вопрос к вам. Огромное количество экспериментов, научных программ проводится на станции. Расскажите вкратце о том, чем вы занимаетесь с точки зрения научной программы. Вкратце, наверное, не получится, потому что... I'm afraid I cannot give you the highlights briefly, because we are conducting multiple experiments, both on the Russian segment and on the U.S. segment. I can say that... Our mission, our current flight, is the next step uh, for all of us to keep exploring uh, space, uh, in deep space. And we are examining the conditions, uh, what it will take for us to keep exploring the deep space. We, in total, conduct over 60 experiments, but in total, if we're talking about my science program, we uh, I conduct over 200 experiments, so this is an overview. Incredible work. Scott, you were up there for a year. You've done a lot of groundbreaking work day in and day out. But tell me about a spacewalk. It looks incredible. It is a lot of work, though. Yeah, it's uh, an incredible amount of work, um, not just while you're outside, but leading up to it. It takes uh, about a month um, of preparation, uh, studying, uh, you know, preparing the suits, all the hardware. Uh, and then when you're outside, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of hard work, too. You're actually in the suit. We were in those suits for almost 12 hours, uh, even though our, our time outside was almost eight hours um, on, on both of them. And uh, the view is uh, better than I expected, um, looking, you know, at Earth through the, just the uh, visor of the helmet. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of that type two kind of fun where it's not really fun while you're doing it, but it's really fun when you're done and very, uh, very rewarding experience. Very complicated work and takes a lot of support by the folks on the ground. Scott, you are a living science experiment. In fact, part of that research that's being conducted is a genetic study with your twin brother, Mark. How are they collecting the data, and what do they hope to learn from that twin study? Well, there's a, a lot of different experiments, and uh, the data collection consists of, uh, you know, bodily samples. We have a Soyuz going home here in, a, in the next couple of days that'll have, you know, 
blood and urine and uh, saliva uh, samples on it. Um, we take those samples often and, and freeze them. Uh, we have imaging technology that we use for measuring, you know, certain parts of like bones and muscles and things like that. Most of the studies with my brother are on the genetic, uh, at, you know, genetically based. So really the, uh, the bodily fluid samples are, are what's uh, analyzed mostly. But also we do cognitive studies where we do, uh, you know, mental kind of tests and see how my uh, performance changes compared to his over time. And, uh, you know, there's a lot to learn still about living in space for long periods of time. And if we're ever going to go to Mars someday, uh, you know, hopefully a study like this will, will, you know, help us get there. Scott and Mikhail, there are many challenges while living up there. The lack of various sounds, smell, but what's really the most difficult part about a year in space? Скотт и Михаил, вопрос вам обоим. Очень много сложностей сопряжено с проживанием целый год на станции. Нет определенных звуков, запахов и так далее. Что для вас самое сложное было вот во время этой экспедиции? Почему больше всего скучали? You know, you know the environment, I think, is, uh, you know, although the space station is big and it's, uh, you know, it's, you know, pretty nice and comfortable in a lot of ways, uh, the thing that's most challenging is you just can't leave. And, uh, you know, and there's no uh, natural light inside. I mean, we have a few windows, but that doesn't provide natural light. So it's kind of like, you know, we're at work all the time. And uh, it's kind of like living in, a, you know, an office building, I guess, maybe at someone at your job, but where everything floats, which makes, you know, doing just about everything more difficult. I will agree with Scott here. Our station is very comfortable for a living, but at the same time, it's a very confined volume, and sometimes it's really hard to be here. We, of course, miss the Earth. We meet. Uh, we miss our families, our friends. The first thing I will do is that when I come back is I will jump in the pool. I would love to do that right now. Of course, we miss water. We miss water that flows and not floats as bubbles in space. So this is the most challenging thing for me. <laughs> Scott, I saw a picture of the Thanksgiving celebration with your food strapped down, the tweet from your brother that said that they were missing you. How are you going to celebrate the holiday season up in space? Any stocking, little Christmas tree maybe? You know, we, had, we last time I was up here, we had a Christmas tree, and I think it's still here, so I need to go break that out, break it out of the attic like uh, we do at home sometimes. <laughs> I haven't found it yet, but I'll I'll find it. And uh, I don't think we have any any stockings, but we will have some, you know, small presents. We'll likely give each other, and probably a meal that would be very similar to what we had for Thanksgiving. And we also celebrate Russian Christmas, which is on January 7th. So, you know, because this is an international space station, we get to experience Christmas twice. That's wonderful. I, I saw a picture last year of them. They were uh, Velcroed onto the wall. So whatever it takes. And to both of you, happy holidays and wonderful work. It's been truly a, a pleasure to watch from the ground. Thank you, and happy holidays to you as well. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. And thank you, Popular Science and WBFF-TV Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>